Well, as we start studying ecosystems, one nice way of learning about them and how they work is to try to make one yourself. Well, maybe more symbol than make. But uh, the students really actually enjoy this activity and it involves building a biosphere. So what I'm calling a biosphere is really just a small scale ecosystem in a bottle. Uh, put several of these together and uh, simpler the better. You can go all out and get a giant aquarium tank size thing, uh, but I really just rather you find even a small water bottle, probably at least a, a liter, but People actually tried this in right outside of Tucson, Arizona in 1991. It was an experiment called the Biosphere. Uh, that's where I borrowed the name from. And they put, uh, I think it was nine scientists in this giant greenhouse. And they had all kinds of different ecosystems in there. And they raised their own food. And they sealed it up. And they tried to live for several uh, years. They had to end it early and there's a whole host of problems, but basically we found out uh, we don't know quite as much about how ecosystems work as we thought. Uh, so there's a lot to learn uh, by both successes and, and failures in this respect. We're going to keep our biospheres pretty simple and mimic a natural ecosystem of either forest floor or a freshwater pond. So this doesn't need to cost anything. Uh, keep in mind they're small, so you need to allow uh, for the ecosystem to be in proportion and allow room for growth of plants. Uh, there should be plenty of non-living matter. You'll notice how much water I have in this freshwater pond. And then over here, there's a fair bit of soil and a relatively small layer of plants, but also quite a bit of air space above it. And we're not going to seal these things up necessarily airtight, but we do want them watertight so that the water cycles around within there. And then we also need living components. And it's not quite as simple as just throwing a couple things in there. So whichever model we build, there's always going to be some living components. You've got to have some air. You need water in any case. Uh, probably some gravel on the bottom, maybe a bit of soil, but in every ecosystem there's plenty of things like this, so consider how you want to do that, uh, maybe even decorate it a little bit. In terms of the living, I don't want to limit you too much here, but we do need at least one producer, and there should be quite a bit of this. This is anything green, basically. Uh, any plants or algae that are going to produce oxygen and a food source for all the uh, others that we're going to put in there. And then we need a consumer, uh, an organism that will eat all those producers, maybe other consumers in there as well, so you might have a whole food chain going in there. This can be a consumer that eats dead things, called a detritivore. Uh, but I'll kind of leave that up to you. And then we definitely need a decomposer to make sure that any of the consumers or producers that die uh, are able to be broken down and then fed back to the producer so that the nutrients can cycle in this ecosystem. So if you go the terrestrial ecosystem route, then you want to start with a gravel base just to allow some space for water to get down there. If you have any activated charcoal, uh, like kind of goes in fish filters, that can be handy as well, keep it fresher. Uh, a little bit of soil on that, probably more like potting soil, something really porous. You don't want to grab a handful of soil from outside. Too much clay in it, mostly around here. Uh, and then some sort of producer. Uh, you can plant, sometimes house plants work in there. Uh, an easy one and free as you go outside. Uh, look on the north side of buildings in a moist area and you'll probably find some mosses. That's what I have in here. Um, I even got some of these that blew off of a roof next door. And then um, consumers in here, pill bugs work out pretty well, maybe even aphids. Um, there's probably little critters if you looked up close inside the moss already living there. They don't need to be big. 
for an aquatic ecosystem, these are pretty simple. Again, you start with a layer of gravel, and that traps a lot of the decomposers down here, gives them a place to live, and all the dead stuff falls down there to be decomposed and released back into the water. Always some, some good, fresh, pure water. Uh, I've gotten some aquatic plants from the pet store here. Um, there's some algae, you can see little bits of it floating around in there. Uh, but even if you got some pond water, then you could probably get some algae going pretty easily uh, in there. Um, for consumers, <clears throat> if you get a big enough one, you could try some little fish, like guppies or something like that. Um, but I just find these little aquatic snails, I'm not sure where that guy went. I had some aquatic snails in here. Um, he's probably just floating around in there somewhere, or hopefully not floating, but uh, moving around. And that helps keep the algae down, but gives us a, a nice consumer. Um, if you have a broader lid, it makes it a little easier to get everything together. But you can see it's clear. Uh, probably the easiest way is like if you have a mason jar, um, put that outer ring on and then there's some saran wrap on the top. Make sure it gets enough light. And so that's an important side of all this is you want to make sure that, um, that we keep it watertight but not airtight necessarily so they can stay kind of loose on there. Uh, you want this to be a self-sustaining ecosystem. That's the goal. So that you really don't need to come in and take care of it and feed fish. Uh, it should all really just take care of itself. Uh, other than maybe on occasion, but probably not even this quarter, uh, to add a little more water to it. Um, and then make sure it goes in a nice brightly lit place. And that makes sure that the producers can do their job, otherwise everything will collapse. And um, not a whole lot of direct sunlight. If these things get too baked, uh, then the mosses and the aquatic plants will, will just sizzle and die. Uh, so when you start this guy, note what you're putting into it. You might take and mark a level on the jar about what level the gravel was and maybe a level for the water just to see how things are changing over time. Um, and then each week uh, you're going to make observations and just note each thing you put in. Uh, how's the water looking? How's your producer? How's your consumer? How's your decomposer? Uh, and you should make observations on those uh, throughout the, the weeks, usually just once a week. And you'll turn all that in uh, at the end as kind of a long-term lab. So that's the Biosphere Project. I hope you enjoy doing that.